Hello everybody and welcome to my channel and today we'll be talking about your control deck and what parts it has to consist of to succeed. Now this video is sponsored by Spikes Academy and their new service deck reviews. Now if you want your deck reviewed and if you happen to want your deck reviewed by me, you can do it via the link down below. The service costs 10 bucks to get your deck reviewed um, to, for me or other people at Spikes to give you feedback on the composition of the deck and what you should potentially change or just consider. If you want me specifically to rate your deck, please remember to put my name or nickname in the description uh, when you're filling out the form. Now, deck composition. If you have your control deck, you have to remember about a few parts. Now let's go left to right. Left lands. Now, however trivial that sounds, now this is a uh, Guillaume Wafotapa's deck list, uh, I think placing second in one of the challenges. You have to remember about your lands, your land count. Do not be stingy. I really, really like playing high land counts. This is 25, no opt. 25. Now remember, in most control decks, like half of the deck cycles or draws a card. This is 25 lands. Now, if you really want to play 23, if you really want to play 24, 22, some people are crazy, but want to play 22. To make yourself feel better for adding more lands, use utility land, right? So add Castle Vantress as your extra land, right? You play 24, may your 25th be Castle Vantress. May your 25th be Hall of the Storm Giants. May your 25th be Reptile Laboratory. May your 25th be... I can't really recommend that, but Celestial Colony. It's better probably to play the 25th land. So if you're really feeling stingy, just add another land, but it's probably a utility land. Now, interaction. So that's, that's the backbone of a control deck. The control deck, in its principle, is purely interactive and reactive now in th this this case we've got four counter spell right per mission you normally it would be mana leak we've got one mana removal which is actually a bit more than one mana removal in this case um it used to be like path to exile it could be bolt or push right just one mana interaction in this case we also have some solitudes and we have supreme verdicts but in some other shells it will be sh um anger of the gods it could be Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy, right? could be Domination. It depends on the shell, right? But we've got, we've got more interaction. This is this all interaction. Now, Shark Typhoon is very difficult to classify. And I'll put it here for now because, because its main purpose is just to be cycled and chum block. So it's, a, it's not really interaction, right? It's like a very miscellaneous card. I'll put it there. But we've got with our backbone interaction. Now, we also have some cards which are very fluid and mixed in their, in their usage. Maybe actually Typhoon should go there. So we've got Archmage, Shaman, Cryptic Command, right? We've got six cards which counter spells and draw cards. So it's like both card advantage, but also interaction. But the primary role is to be interaction, right? Cryptic can tap, can bounce, um, can, uh, can counter bounce, can counter bounce and can tap, and can back tap. Uh, Archmage's Charm can steal a permanent or can counter a spell, right? Teferi bounces thing from the battlefield. Typhoon, yeah, chomps in this case, right? So we've got these flexible cards, which could be on this side, right? We could put them here. We could very well put them here, right? But they're not only going there because they're also going to this other side. So this is like, this is card advantage, right? Pure card advantage. So in control decks, we used to play Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, we used to play, for example, some people play Hieroglyphic Illuminations, Behold the Multiverse, Glimmer of Genius. Across different formats, there are a lot of different card draw effects. They don't have to be strictly card draw. They could be card advantage in other form. Uh, but, 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 but sometimes people use just straight up drawing cards, right? Snapcaster is also considered card advantage, although he... Can be both interaction or all counter magic or, or, or card advantage depends uh, how you play it. And the way control has got much better in recent years is because card functions um, change depending on the situation you're in. So cryptic can be card advantage or purely interaction, right? Tap bounce. 
Archmage's charm can be interaction or pure card advantage, right? Draw to end step. Um, Teferi Time Raveler can be interaction, but it could be called the card advantage, like bounce my own all Wall of Omens, buy, bounce my own uh, Snap Custom Mage, bounce my own Spreading Seas, right? Um, so this is why control decks actually have got much better. But you have to have in mind this card, this card advantage aspect. So does your deck contain proper card advantage? Because it might seem like it should be good. But actually in practice, you're playing against you no know, with 2k commands and you just, just, just can't keep up. Because you don't have proper card advantage. Now, don't overload it too much. Because then your whole game will be just drawing card advantage spells. We also have win conditions. And now, there's a difference between actually winning and effectively winning. Because control decks very often effectively win. Meaning they've got seven cards in hand, empty battlefield. And like, there's no way you can win. But they can't really close out the game, you know? And sometimes just playing this one or two snap custom mages and one or two teferis might just not be enough. And that's why I personally really like playing Hall of the Storm Giants as a one of Manlan, which is very difficult to deal with. That's why we also have shark typhoons here, because without these typhoons, right, look at that. And let's, let's look at actually winning the game, like actually closing it, right? Not opponent like shame uh, conceding or, or like, like annoyance conceding, actually winning. It's two Teferis, it's the Solitudes, but, and, and this one Colonnade, right? While game one, you are very vulnerable, vulnerable to removal, because people have main deck removal most of the time. So Colonnade and a Solitude might not do the job, right? So you have only Teferis. It's, a, it's going to be very difficult to win. However, if you have Shark Typhoon, right, it's plus four, now it a bit changes the equation, but the broader point is remember about that. Don't play like people play like playing no condition control decks, but let's not push it, push it to this gimmick status. Like people like this gimmick of oh no win can control deck, but like you have to have a win condition, like actual win condition. It doesn't have to be purely a win condition like Baneslayer Angel. It can be multi-purpose, right? Like a Teferi Hero of Dominaria, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Vendelian Clique. And my favorite is Snapcaster Mage, right? Because Snapcaster Mage is just, you know, more copies of Ending and Counterspell and, and Supreme Verdict, Night Mage's Charm and, and, and Factor Fiction. But it also just boop, pings you for two, right? Especially in a deck with like Bolts and Helixes if you go more Jeskai, right? So please, please remember about win conditions. And now, very often in control, you've got some flex slots or flex-ish slots because the actual proportions depend on the deck. How much actual interaction you want, how much permission versus removal versus discard maybe. How many mass removal spells main deck do you want? How many planeswalkers? How much instant speed, sorcery speed? How much one mana interaction you want? And that's going to be delicate balance and dance between all these numbers. But sometimes, Depending on the metagame you play, you will make very, very specific card choices. And now in the current metagame, you really want these Supreme Verdicts because they're excellent. Especially against like these uh, monkey decks, like Merc deck decks, where Supreme Verdict doesn't care if you've got these spell pieces and counter spells. Just get rid of it, Merc Tide. Get rid of the Merc Tide. Get rid of the, all the elementals. It's very, very useful to catch back up, especially with the fairies. Now it's instant speed. However, even more importantly, What's peculiar to this meta game are these four slots which Guillaume Wafotapa has decided to use. So that's first Chalice of the Void, the card which gets rid of two things. Like because it, its purpose is to be put both I mean, either on zero or on one. Zero against Cascade decks, right? Uh, rhinos counter, Living End counter. Um, sometimes you, you can even spike some Mishra's Bobbles, but that's not the point. Cascade decks, no, we say no to Cascade decks. Chalice on one, we know what that is. The whole format is mono Lurus, right? So you've got your Hammers, you've got your Esper Sentinels, you've got your uh, Dragon Rages Channelers, you've got your Ragavans, you've got your Thought Scours, Bolts, and Holy Heats. And now, even though you've spent your whole game, you know, you know, serum visions and stuff, even though, you know, you may be late in the game and you top deck this chalice against like blue red merc tide, it's still going to be useful. Because chalice on one turns off, for example, all the unholy heats, which they will, they will have. 
especially, especially pre-bought. And now you are sure that your Teferi Hero of Dominaria isn't going to just die out of nowhere, right? Five mana plus the one mana kill it. Now it's not going to happen. So you can set up your wins at the end while you begin with two mana chalice, right? With your other less seven mana left over waiting. And then you set up your Teferi turn, now knowing it doesn't die to Unholy Heat, right? So Chalice of the Void especially exploits the Lurus meta game. Now Spreading Seas, Spreading Seas, uh, Spreading Seas's function is fairly clear, or maybe actually not. In the past, Spreading Seas was used mainly to combat Tron, right? Turn to Spreading Seas, and now we don't have to hold up interaction because if the Tron is offline, you've got some time off, now they have to get rid of the Spreading Seas, right? It just slows them down immensely. But right now, it's even stronger because of Urza's saga. Because of how rules work, Spreading Seas just kills off saga. Two mana, kill your land, draw a card. On the play, that's devastating, right? On the play, turn to kill your saga. Even on the draw, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter when they play it. But against Titan, right? Titan very often begins with saga. So you just go, boop, kill it, right? Could be turn two, doesn't matter, kill it. And you, you set them back a turn while drawing a card yourself, right? So these would be the slots which exploit the current meta game, right? So all in all, to summarize, we've got lands, we've got interaction, we've got these kind of modal, modal spells, which are the strength of current control decks. We've got card advantage, we've got win conditions, and we've got metagame exploiting slots. Now think of your control deck, think of your control deck, how, how, what its composition is. And then if you're not sure, if you would like to ask a question or, or get, for example, my comment, broader comment on your specific deck list, make sure to go to the link down below, uh, fill out the form for deck reviews. Remember to put my name there and I will personally review your deck and send it back within the next probably two, three days, but like five business days tops. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember this, this video is sponsored by Spikes Academy. And uh, what else can I say? Please remember to hold my hand and pass the turn together and see you next time. Cheers.